Alright guys, I want to welcome you all back to some more Umi Neko. We're about midway through episode 3 with the focus squarely back on Ava again, which is pretty cool because I was actually looking forward to seeing more of her and more of the focus being put on her other self for that matter. And I gotta say, this is one of those parts in the game that really impressed me because I just love the way it was presented. And you guys will see for yourselves as well to those that are not in the know who haven't played this game at all or read this visual novel, but I really liked it. So if anything else, thank you all for the love and support. Hope you all continue to enjoy. Let's get right back into it. Alright everyone, welcome back. What a shameful childlike face that she would never have shown in front of Battler. Beatrice rolled her head around on top of the table. Oh, しょうさま。せめてヒントを。おや。何のヒントですか?バトラをギャフンと言わせて、わらわを認めたくなるような上手いさしてを。ズバリ教えろとは言わないから、その、せめてヒントだけでも。ははは、ダメですよ。<笑
、わらわを魔女と認めてください、お願いします、と頼み込めというのか愚かなそこまでわらわは落ちぶれてはおらぬグーッビアとグラウッド、like a dog in a bad mood。Virgilia shrugged her shoulders, snickering at her disciple, who was as short-tempered as always. ヒントは出しました。あとはあなたがよく考えることですよ。いずれにせよ、バトラ君にこれまでの手は通用しません。相当の戦略転換が必要になるでしょう。言われずとも分かっておる。北風と太陽の話は何が言いたいのかさっぱりだが。とにかく、方針を変えねばならぬことは分かった。お師匠様もあっと驚くような奇策を披露してみせるぞ<笑>それは楽しみですねバトラ君はそれにどう挑むのかしらあなたの健闘も祈っていますよバトラのついでにふん<笑>もう投げ出して、子さんそんなに眠いなら、お布団かぶって眠っちゃえば As my consciousness grew vague and I pretended to fight my drowsiness, sinking deeper and deeper into the sofa, I scolded myself. あんなにも、クラウスから当主の座を奪ってやりたいって夢見てきたんでしょ I was wondering when this one would show up again. She's been quiet for a while. そのチャンスを私の魔法が与えたのに、あなたはもう放り投げちゃうのそうは言うけれど。この謎は本当に何回よ知恵の輪の方がまだマシだわ。解けるってことが絶対に約束されているもの。でもこの碑文の謎は、それすらも約束されているかわからない。私は、挑むだけ無駄な勝負を挑んでるのかもしれない。Still hazy, I looked at the notebook which I had been holding the whole time. It was open to the page with the epitaph which I had stared at, almost burned a hole through on so many hundreds of nights I had lost count. That is truly a door. On the other side is the Golden Land, that place which ever since I was a child I've wished to reach, I've spared no effort to reach, and I've never been able to reach. Here I am with both hands upon the door. And even though the book, no, the door is open, I still cannot reach the other side. So, yo, Anata, Tobira, ni teo kakete. So, 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 See through to what lies further beyond the epitaph written in the notebook. Natsukashiki Kokyo wa, watashitachi no sozo wo kitto uragira nai wa. Otou sama ga yuiitsu natsukashimu kako wa, shounen jidai dake da mono. So ne, nara, ayu no kawa wa? Sore ga oyogu kawa wa fukusu aru shi, お父様が住んでいた場所のすぐ近くにあったかは怪しい。アユの生息するどの川が地図上距離的に近いか。なんて話になると、急に曖昧になって特定ができなくなる。自分で言ったじゃない。水の流れる川かどうかわからないって。アユという言葉がそんなにもややこしいなら忘れてしまえば川で考えるの。川で。家系図という連想は悪くないわ。その要領で川から連想するものを他にも考えてみて。川じゃなくて川じゃなかったらアユは泳げないのに They've been so focused on the fact that it's 
a sweet fish in a river that it could just be a metaphor for something else. I don't know what that is in particular because I don't really know Kinzo like that. Obviously the family does. And even though we have, my, I wouldn't say minor, but we do have some info on him based on the character descriptions that were shown and given during each death and each episode, it's still not enough for me to even grasp what that truly means. So I'm kind of hoping they give us like the obvious hint soon to come. でも、ああ。でも。気づいた。でも、うろ覚えなの。ここにはショコがあったはず。調べれば確認できるわ。それがアユの川なら、そして鍵は6文字の単語かもしれないなら、鍵が本当にその川に眠ってるというの? I I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I have to search in the atlas. But even if I know that, I don't know from what I should take the six characters. ほんとにわからないのよく考えて。私たちは下手に頭がいいから発想が硬いのよ。気分の謎なんて大層に考えないで。子供の謎謎だと思って。男なんていくつになったって子供なの。お父様が老朽に差し掛かったとしても、心の
I've been half asleep until a short time ago, so I haven't been able to realize how significant this thing I had realized was. But as I started to become aware, my heart started feeling like it was about to explode. Well, if they did, they'd be in the same room with me right now. あいつおかしな感がするどいわ。あとはローザもわからない。ローザもグドンよ。昔から呆れるくらいにね。I don't even think Rosa is dim at all. In fact, I just think it's because of how she was brought up and raised with her siblings that she's she has like such she has low she has low self esteem that she doesn't believe she's as smart as the rest of them. But she clearly is. She was able to like figure out that the river could also just be a figure of speech. So, あなたにグドンと思い込ませて。or that. I pulled the book out and flipped to the pages. これ。ああいうの川。なるほど。ああいうの川とはそういう意味なのね。もたもたしないでさらに調べて。え、分かってる。川を下れば、やがて里あり、悟って町や村って意味、人口密集地だもの、そんなのいくらでもあるわよ。どうして思考を停止するの嫌なら辞めちゃえば後宮家の当主は綺麗に譲っちゃえば、いやよ、私が当
ちこっちへ回れってことよねこいつらが私をこっちへ回れと誘ってるもの She's gonna die first, isn't she? <laughs> My heart leapt, because there, gaping wide, was the open mouth of eerie darkness. When I strained my eyes, peering into the darkness, I saw something that looked like a light switch. In addition, there was a switch with open and closed written on it. Oh, a hidden passage. I resolutely pushed the switch for the lights, and rough lights almost like you'd find in a coal mine or something flickered on sporadically, making a staircase that stretched underground come hazily into vision. It was creepy how it now looked like more gloomy, looked even more gloomy with the lights turned on. Other than the light switch, there was also a switch with open and close written on it. I could probably open and close it with this, but if I was unlucky enough to find that the open part was broken, I might be closed up in this creepy underground area for all eternity. So for the time being, I didn't touch the open and close switch. And as I readied my gun again, I slowly went down the stairs. She probably should have brought at least her husband with her, like... Jeez, man, <laughs> that's creepy. Because the ceiling was very high, it didn't feel cramped. On the contrary, it felt as though a cool breeze was blowing upwards, and I even sensed a spiritual presence from the eeriness of it. With my gun at the ready, I carefully and carefully staring forwards, I continued descending the stairs. The walls, the stairs, the lights, all of them were very old-fashioned. It may be beyond doubt that this had been made at the same time that the mansion had been constructed on this island. There were cracks in the ceiling, and water clung to the walls, constantly dripping down. That water fell into a gutter that had been set up alongside the stairs, then quickly and silently flowed into the underground darkness. It was as though it was telling me to go faster. The staircase turned back on itself a number of times. It was hard to tell how far underground I'd gone, but I thought it'd be much deeper than one floor. And eventually, a rough metal door showed itself. And there, characters had been written in a dark red paint. They had probably been written a long time ago. On the tenth twilight, the journey ends and you shall reach the home of the gold. My heart, which was already about to explode, jumped about even more as soon as I read those deep red characters. There's no mistake. This is the last stop. Father's Golden Land. I calmed my, I calmed my throbbing heart, somehow regained my composure and readied the gun again. But since in the end I couldn't open the door with my gun held in both hands, I lowered the gun carefully, erased my breath, and opened the door. <laughs> my first impression when I saw the room was to question whether it might have been connected to one of the rooms in the mansion. Yes, this place had exactly the same atmosphere about it as the forbidden VIP room on the second floor. But this was the underground, so there was no windows. There was only the solemn light of a grand chandelier. But the quality of the interior, dimly lit by the faint light, was more than enough to take your breath away. A bed with a canopy and a rocking chair that looked like it would be very comfortable to sit in. An extravagant sofa and carpet. The room was like a dream every girl yearns for at least once. And yet, since it was an underground hidden room with no windows, it actually felt more like it could be a hidden house of a witch. I had never swallowed the legend of Beatrice Witch of the Forest. However, if you were shown this room, it certainly would become hard to doubt that she actually had existed, and had lived in here. <laughs> Although I was dumbfounded by this room, I cautiously, no timidly, kept my gun raised and searched the interior. And, in the center of the room, I found it. Oh my goodness! My gasp came out strangely as though a bunny was being choked. I mean, after finding something like this, no one would have any words other than that stupid voice. On the opposite side of the canopy bed, it was piled up in a massive heap. A mountain 
a mountain of gold ingots. Of course, they were piled up carelessly in a way that would damage the dignity of this room. A beautiful scarlet satin weave was laid on the mountain of gold, creating a beautiful three-colored mix between the red, the gold, and the black of the deep darkness. It was as though when the witch slept on this bed, the gold would be a respectful chamberlain waiting on her. Nobly, refinedly, gracefully, beautifully. It was piled up there with an imposing and yet ceremonious air. I tried to grab a single gold ingot and was surprised at its weight. It was probably about 10 kilograms. Just this one ingot would easily be worth 10 million without a doubt. The Ushidomiya family crest the one winged eagle was lightly imprinted on it. It was hard to tell whether it had worn away or whether the impression had been made carelessly in the first place. But it was certainly the crest of the one winged eagle. Just how many ingots are piled up here? Just by roughly multiplying both sides and multiplying that by the height, it must surely come to over several hundred. My mind's already blank. I can't calculate it properly. Even a conserv conservative wow, I can't read. Even a conservative count would put it easily above a billion yen. So so yo. So ni kimatteru wa yo. Datte. Jutto no ogon yo. Jika ni shite 200 okuen no ogon yo. So, how does this work then? If she found it, does she tell everyone? Because if she tells everyone, wouldn't they be fighting over it? And at the end of the day, whoever, I guess, owns the gold ingots in the room is the sole heir to the Ushiomiya family? Or does she not tell them? And I don't know what happens from there. <laughs> In front of the mountain of gold, I spread my arms and looked up at the ceiling. A laugh without a trace of dignity flowed out from my entire body. That's also what's been happening a lot lately with these people. <laughs> the undignified laughter. I had no intention at all of laughing in such a weird way, but I just, I just couldn't hold back the happy feeling that flowed throughout my entire body. That older brother of mine probably wouldn't accept this loss just because I had found this gold. But from now on, there would be no changing the fact that I had been the one to find the gold. To steal the headship with the family, I would still probably need some subtle tactics. But after everything I've gone through until now, that's a completely trivial problem. Even if I lose down the inheritance of the Ushiomiya family and every everything, this 20 billion yen's worth of gold is now mine, and mine alone. この世の全ての幸せはこの黄金を溶かすことで生み出すことができるこのお金があれば夫の会社はもう大丈夫私たち家族はずっと幸せそして常時にも莫大なお金を残してあげることができる他の親戚たちなど やがては没落して消えるわその時ジョージはこの黄金を使って失われた後宮家の遺構をまるでお父様がそうしたように復興させてみせるのよその時誰も異論を挟めないわジョージこそが後宮家の本当の跡継ぎなのよ Alright everyone, I'm gonna end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. 
we have finally witnessed firsthand that Ava was the first one <laughs> to find the location of the hidden gold. Not, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily say the golden land, maybe it is, but there's probably more to come and I'm pretty sure it won't end well for Ava either. But we'll find out in the next one, so thank you all for watching.